Hello? Hello? Is that Bangkok Customs? Listen, I'm calling about my son, Michael Dixon. He's been locked up. I'm calling from England. England. And I... Hello? Hello? They've cut me off. Right, that is it. I have had just about enough now. I'm packing my bag, I'm getting off. And what do you mean, you're packing your bag? You're going nowhere. I am, I'm going to Bangkok. I'm fighting a losing battle trying to get anything happening from here. You are going to sit and calm down for a few minutes. Well, try those breathing exercises they give you at the Aussie. Jackie, what was the name of that travel agent that you used? The one that booked your flights out to Australia. And what do you want to know that for? Just dig as me passport out, will you, Bev? Dad, I've told you. There's no point in going over there until we know exactly what's happening and what we could do for them. Well, we're no good to anyone doing nothing back here, are we? And what would you do, eh? Go on, what? You'd only end up spending a fortune on hotel bills, and you probably won't even get to see our Mike anyway. You'd be better off waiting until he was something to go over there for. Oh, yeah. Like what? His last meal before they execute him. Right. One passport. Thank you. Now, listen to me, Ron Dixon. Regardless of what you might think, no matter how worried you are about Mike, you are in no fit state to travel. So as far as this is concerned, I'm keeping an eye on it from now on. Oh, Beverly. What kind of a father's are Michael going to think I am, eh? What are you going to think about me doing nothing to help him? Dad, you'll know that we're doing everything we can for him. You'll know. Ron, please. For Mike's sake. We're his last hope. <sighs> you were up early? Yeah. Couldn't sleep. Every time I dozed off, I kept thinking I heard the phone ringing. I thought there might be some news. Who are you phoning? Just testing it's still working. You look a lot more together than you have done recently. Well, I'm really trying, Jack. Especially with you here to help me. You might. Life does go on. Not for Lindsay and Mike, it doesn't. Life stopped dead for them. Come on, come on! I've um, been thinking about what you said last night. Oh, yeah. But you were right. I've made a new appointment at the clinic. The counsellor's fit me in after his normal session's finished today. Oh, great. Nice one. Can I still come and hold your hand? Well, if you could spare the time, that'd be great. Bev, quick! I'm through, I'm through! Bev, it's a record a message. Give us a pen, love. Oh. Come on, quick! Do you want some paper or it's, something? It's okay. Just write on my arm. That's what's happening. He's finally got through. Right. Got to ring another number. Well, whose number's that? It's for contacting the consulate staff in an emergency. Ah, that's better. This one's ringing first time. Things are starting to move now. Need to sleep? Yeah, she's been a little star. I haven't had a peep out of her all night. I had the kids creeping round the place before they got off to school. Didn't want to wake her up, you know. Oh, it's, uh, it's just doing a bottle for her now. All right. Any word on whether Mandy's uh, better or not? Yeah, I phoned her last night. She's still feeling a bit rough, but she's enjoying the rest. <laughs> so, what's your plans for today, then? Well, I thought I'd try and take her out on me round again. See if I don't have a bit more luck than I had last time. Well, if she slept well last night, then maybe she's settled in now. Yeah, she's been as good as gold, hasn't she? <laughs> later, Victor. Yeah, see you later. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, I understand, yes. Thank you very much. What did they say? They're still in custody. At least we know the boat's still alive. Well, what about little Kylie? She's still with her mum. I know, if it was me and Josh, I wouldn't let them out of my sight. Yeah, look, I'm going to stick the kettle on. They said they're going to fax something through to Maxie's. Meanwhile, my son is still stuck in that cockroach-infested prison camp. Come on, Ron. Can't have you going under. Listen, I promised Katie I'll go to the clinic with her in a minute. Are you all right if I leave you for an hour? Yeah. Yeah, of course I am, love. Won't be going far, will I? Wouldn't want to miss a vital call. Listen, love, don't worry. We're going to get him out somehow. I don't care how long it takes, we're going to get him out. Oh, isn't she gorgeous? <laughs> Loud but gorgeous. <laughs> Don't you just gonna settle, you know, son? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, 
I thought the fifth time she started today, do you think there's something wrong with her? Who knows with kids, eh? Maybe she's just missing her mum. Right, better go and do some shopping. I don't like to be too far away from the phone at the moment. Right, have you heard anything now? Still no words from Michael Lynch? Still working on it. Oh, well, we've got a lot of people around here pulling for you, you know that, don't you? You don't want the support we can get, believe me. Yeah. Right. Oh, listen. Oh, Jeff. Can I do you in this later? She's not going to stop. No, that's all right, love. Yeah. Right. See ya. See ya. Oh. What's wrong with you, eh? Oh, you were perfect last night. Oh. Now you're on the wee ragged. Come on. Well, whoever went in there last to certainly get the money's worth. Listen, you get off if you want to, don't mind. I we'll promise I'll go in this time. No, well, I'm here now. Let's as well stay. You okay? A bit nervous. Got butterflies. It's always a funny smell in these places. It's enough to knock anyone sick. Still, rich in good company. A certain member of the world is a bulimia, you know. I mean, all that money. All those exotic holidays and glamorous places. Getting a bronzy in the knack, and where does it leave you? Throwing up in the royal bucket for three years. Still, you've got one thing the royals haven't. What's that? Me? Cheering you up. Two sheets. Oh, thanks, love. Right, let's see what they sent us, eh? Don't get your hopes up, love. Just a list of English-speaking lawyers out there for us to contact. I haven't even organised lawyers for them yet. They're not allowed to, the vice consul said. It's crazy, isn't it? I mean, what's the use of having officials out there when they can't even do a simple thing like this? Well, I suppose it's a start, isn't it? Mind you, I don't know how we're supposed to know which ones are any good, like. Well, if you ever want to use the facts again, don't hesitate, OK? Any time. Thanks, Lord. And I hope you get some good news soon. He didn't do it, you know. Oh, Michael. I know he didn't do it. He was set up, he's innocent. Right, come on, love, we're going on the phone, eh? Yeah. Look, are you sure it's OK to yeah, use the facts? Okay, honestly, no problem. We'll pay you, like. <laughs> There's no need to think about that now. We'll worry about that when the bill comes in, eh? Yeah, well, it's nice to know someone's on our side. Come on, Dad. Thanks again. See ya. OK, see ya. Bye-bye, Ron. Bye. Ron, um, I went looking for that, um, prostitute woman again last night, but, uh, no luck. So what are you got to do? Give up on it? I might give it one more try tonight. See if I can find her. Well, all I can say, mate, is best of luck. See you. See you. Well, there's our phone bill about to go through the roof. Oh, Max, what else could I say? They both look like they're in a state of shock. I hope they do turn out to be innocent. Wouldn't want our phone number to end up on some police drugs file somewhere. Do you really think Mike Dixon would be stupid enough to smuggle drugs into Thailand? Well, they were off to a new life down under, remember? They wouldn't have had too much money between them, so selling the drugs there would have got them off to a flying start. Honestly, Max, I'd like to see how you'd enjoy being accused of something you hadn't done. Um, is this Dr. Smith's office? Yeah, that's right. Shall I wait outside? No, no, you're okay. Come in. Um, Dr. Smith be long? I'll let you into secret. He hates being called Doctor. You have to call him Mark or, um, the Prenton Parrot. The what? Because <laughs> he's a manic Tranmere supporter. Never shuts up about them. My brother was a YTS with Tranmere. Really? Did he go on to play for them? No, we went to play for Torquay eventually. Tranmere's loss, eh? Hey, do you want to try that for us? Bingo. I've not introduced myself, have I? The Prenton Parrot, at your service. You're not Dr. Smith. Uh, I was the last time I looked. Oh, um, Casey Rogers, I, I thought you were just someone who worked here. Yeah, I am. I could have made a total show of myself, but I mean, I probably have. I feel really stupid now. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You're just Katie, I'm just Mark. Are you sure you're not just some caretaker winding me up? <laughs> I'm BSC PhD, if you don't mind. I'm sorry, it's just you seem really ordinary. <laughs> ordinary? Oh, well, that's my confidence shattered for the day. <laughs> Have a seat. So, aren't you going to ask me to do deep questions about why I'm here? Um, only if you really want me to, but it uh, sounds a bit heavy to me. <laughs> so, uh, you a football fan yourself? Uh, sort of.
Carlin's he's doing now. Curse and you know who, probably. What away that metal gases. Listen, Jackie, I'm gonna find him. We can get him to own up to planting them drugs. They'll be halfway to their freedom then. Jimmy, we've got no chance of finding him. He'll have done the biggest runner he's ever done in his scabby little life. Look, and get a few people sniffing him out for me. He'll have long gone, Jimmy. He's not gonna come back here, eh? Love, if he's around, I will hear about it. And I'm telling you, when I catch up with him, he won't know what's hit him. Jess Beggett's fans, eh? Oh, they were, yeah. My dad was always on her and mad about getting him fit. <laughs> well, at least girls don't get that kind of pressure. Uh, I suppose your dad just spoils you. Um, no, he retired two and a half years ago. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sorry. You must have been quite young. Only 47. He died in a car accident. She must have been devastated. Did your mum cope OK? Well, they, they'd already split up by then, so... Do you miss him? I couldn't believe it. I still can't, really. I was always... Well, you know, his little Katie, when I was a teenager. Yeah. I used to be the same with my mum. I've got two sisters, and uh, I hated me when I was little, cos I could get away with murder. <laughs> I've got a sister, Sammy. She used to always be on at me. Are we all right for time? I thought you'd only seen me for ten minutes today. All right, I never noticed. <laughs> I'm terrible for getting carried away. Uh, listen, do you want to take one of these with you? It's a new uh, fanzine we're setting up. I had my arm twisted to write a couple of things for it. All right. I've got you down as editor-in-chief here. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's only a laugh, though. Anyway. So, do I start the treatment next time? Treatment? You make it sound as if you're about to have a lobotomy. <laughs> ah, it's just a chat. Think of me as your mate. Just say whatever you like to me. All right, well, I suppose you know what you're doing. Glad you've got confidence in me. I just thought you'd be loading me down with all kinds of advice and that. No way. I mean, unless you want to get into all of that what's going on with your body stuff. No, I think I'll stick with it this way. I'm sure you'll be able to get me sources out. Me? I'll not be doing anything. You're the one who'll be doing all the hard work. All right. See you next time, then. Yeah, OK. Bye. Bye. Just off into the restaurant. Won't be long. Uh, show my face. Make sure things are on even keel after last night. Oh, was it a major crisis? No, uh, not really. Just the norm. Chef banging on about the staff being incompetent, the staff deciding to mutiny. Usual fun stuff. Max, you know my laptop? Yes. Well, I know it's been OK for everything we've needed to do up till now, but um, if I am going to be doing more of your PR stuff, then we really should be thinking of upgrading. I mean, some of the multimedia packages you can get now are amazing. And Thomas would love all that CD-ROM encyclopedia stuff. Oh, sounds like a good idea. Talk about it sometime. I'll see you. You OK? Yes, of course. I'm just tired, that's all. Bye. <laughs> you sure? I'm fine, honestly. Yeah. Oh, look at you two. Peace perfect PC. You're joking, aren't you? This is the first quiet five minutes I've had all day. Was Leo and Gemma? Upstairs, with the headphones on. I don't think they could stand listening to this little banshee wailing any longer. <laughs> Been that bad, has she? It's been worse. She cried, I fed her. She cried, I got a window. She cried, so I changed the nappy. Then she cried because she'd filled the nappy that had just changed. Then she cried for three hours for no reason. I think it was just to wind me up. <sighs> I think she's missing her mum? Who knows? I think she's sick of looking at my ugly mush. Oh, fancy playing your daddy up then. 
Wouldn't believe it to look at her now, would you? Are you sure she's been that bad? Honestly, God, mate, I haven't done a tap all day and I'm knackered. Hardest job in the world being a full-time man. Take it from somebody who knows, mate. Oh, honest, mate, I was ready to throw through the back door before you. Why don't you get a kip yourself while she's gone down? I can't have any in a penny all day. I'm already three days behind on my round. Well, you're gonna have to start working nights, aren't you? <sighs> How can I? Well, I've got the lungs from hell to look after. Well, I've finished for the night. I can babysit for a couple of hours. Could you, mate? Well, of course. You've looked after Leo and Jimmy enough time for me, haven't you? Hey, that'd be brilliant, that. Yeah, uh, as long as you don't go too far, in case she starts cramming again. Hey, if I only get the close done, at least I'll have made the start catching up. <laughs> Tell you what, I'm gonna get some stick going out and cleaning windows in the dark, aren't I? Uh, make a change from doing them with your eyes closed. Oh, yeah, very funny. Yeah. All right, baby. Daddy's going out to earn you a few pennies for your pocket money, OK? <laughs> You're not really gonna wash windows in the dark, are you? Well, I've gotta get some cash coming in, haven't I? And I can't keep dipping into my savings. This is all right, now. Yeah, I think I just started panicking before when she wouldn't stop crying, you know. Well, if she was getting too much for you, you should have given Mandy a call. No, 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 no. Mandy needs a break. Anyway, just until she gets better. And in the meantime, I wouldn't swap her for bun loaf. You might not remember me. Um, I, I want to talk to you. Yeah, whatever. Room or car? No, no, no. I mean it. I genuinely want to speak to you. Is there somewhere we can go less conspicuous? I can arrange something. No, look, I am not trying to pick you up. I want to ask you a favour. Well, if I'm here talking to you, I'm losing money here. Oh, here, look. Watch. This might sound absolutely ridiculous, but I've never been in this situation before, so I've no idea of the amounts involved. Oscar Delta to Charlie Papa 2. Charlie Papa 2. We've got a likely lad. Businessman type. Mid-thirties, fair hair. Looks like he's getting himself set up for the night. Looks like this one could be worth keeping an eye on. Hiya. Hi. I was wondering where you got to. Oh, I thought we'd never get out of the place. How'd it go, love? Great. Um, I'm going to make a coffee. Anyone want one? Not for me. Uh, tea for me, please. All right. She sounds keen. Should have seen her when she got out. She can't wait to go back. Looks like this councillor might have the magic touch, eh? Hey, don't I get any of the credit? I was the one who persuaded her to go in the first place, you know. Yeah, yeah, of course you do. I'm in the house, looking after you. Still no news from Bangkok. It's becoming a catchphrase round here, that, isn't it? Hey, got to hang on in there, Ron. This business takes time, you know. Well, that's something our Michael's got a lot of. A lifetime behind bars. We'll get him out. You've got to believe that, Ron. We'll get him out. I'll be down to do yours in a minute if I can find my way. You're not doing your rounds in the dark, are you? Yeah, well, I'm just trying to catch up, you know, while Mick's babysitting, so... I've seen some things in my time. Listen, we're just going to Chippy. Do you want something? No, no, not for me, Sam. I'm, uh, I've got a crack on. I don't suppose you've had any more news about your Lindsay, then? Been climbing the walls, and they just had to get out for five minutes. You know. Well, like they say, no news might be good news. Yeah, I hope so. See ya. Okay, yeah, see you later. Sure. Sir. I'm sorry, love. There's no way I'm walking into a police station with you. I get enough faster as it is off the police without going looking All for right. more. Well, what if I paid you above uh, what we agree for you to talk to me now? You gonna make me an offer? Yeah, uh, well, I don't know. Um, how about £50? <laughs> oh, eh? Here we go. Look, I'm sorry, how about 75 Just leave it, eh? Uh, Just get lost, will you? Oh, look. This fella's desperate, isn't he? Excuse me, sir. Can you hold it there, please? This all looks very businesslike. <laughs> yes, well, um, actually, it's all perfectly simple. Good. Saves on the paperwork when things are simple. You have your name, sir? Is that really necessary? Name and address, sir. Why should I? I haven't done anything wrong. You've been observed associating with a known prostitute, sir. Were you aware of that? Yeah, but not in the way that you mean. I think that this uh, young lady here can explain the circumstances. I was only on my way home, right? And this guy just starts asking me for no reason. Yeah, yeah. Don't give me that, Linda. Or whatever name you're using tonight. Look, will you please explain to this officer why I'm here? I've been round long enough to know that, sir.
think we should call in at Ron's? See if there's any news? No, it's a bit late. Let's leave it, I love. Hello? Anyone home? Some scally broke in. I tried to get hold of him, Jack, but he was too quick. He was waiting for the new it. You all right? Yeah, I'm OK. I'm just... Are you all wet, love? Oh, all right. Come on, let's get you dry. No, no, you're all right. I'll go home and get changed, Jack. I'm just a bit shook up. Oh, don't think this working at night was a good idea after all. I'll see you later. Yeah, all right. Thanks, love. Right. See you. OK, see you later. No one broke in. What? Whoever it was had a key. Gary. It's all right, girl. Well, what would you be coming back here for? Well, whatever it was, I'm telling you, if I catch him, he'll regret it. Scumbag. I don't want to have to ask you again, sir. Would you mind getting into the car? Why? Why should I? I've done nothing wrong. Tell that to the judge. I'd like you to come to the station with me. No, I am not going anywhere. I'm not guilty of anything, so why should I? In the car, please. Oh, you get your hands off me. I said no. Right. That's it, sunshine. You've had your chance. I'm not satisfied with what I've seen or heard from you. It needs sorting out at the station. I'm arresting you. You can't arrest me! In the car. I'm arresting you for soliciting. Channel 4. Every time I try to put her down, she starts bawling her head off. She's not got a temperature, she? Well, she doesn't seem sick, like. Yeah, let's have a look. Oh, she hadn't bothered, though. I think she wants her daddy. Uh, <laughs> she is. <laughs> Make sure they can understand it. Yeah, all right, love, I'm doing my best. Maybe we should have it typed. Hiya. Hiya. Oh, it's no good, I can't concentrate here. Every time I write on Michael's name, I start to fill up. No, are you writing a letter to our Michael? No, I'm just trying to do a couple of letters to these Bangkok lawyers. I'm trying to find out what kind of astronomical fee they're going to charge. Yeah, I'll finish it for you. Yeah, too Oh, smash it. Oh, yeah. thanks, love. You're a little lifesaver. Yeah, yeah, no. Right then. Who wants one? Me, top. Katie? Uh, no, I don't think I should. Why not? Well, I'm still watching me waiting. Are you hungry? Maybe you're sort of, I suppose. Well, then one biscuit's not gonna kill you, is it? Come on, gotta have a bit here with your cup of tea. Fed all Michael would give his eye teeth for a brew and a jammy dodger now, eh? Maybe you're lucky to get bread with his water. See, I was going to tell you, but, um... If you actually didn't need to know, then there wouldn't be much point in telling you in the first place. Why don't you just tell me where you were, Max, without all the rambling excuses? Because it's a very delicate situation. I was out late last night because... I went round to see the person you hate most in the world. 
Susanna. You see, I knew if I told you, you would overreact. Well, if you go sneaking off until the middle of the night visiting your ex-wife, how do you expect me to react? I went round there to help us solve a problem. That was my only motive, I promise you. What problem? She was panicking about something. What about not having interfered with our marriage for at least five minutes? It took longer than I thought to calm her down, to get things into perspective. So, what exactly was this mega crisis that needed Supermax to fly into the rescue? Well, uh, Dill, really. Um, she was always going to follow him out to Dubai, which, as you know, is something that he'd promised all along. Anyway, he's since hooked up with this dancer and has gone really cold on her. And it seems like the relationship is now over. Well, surprise, surprise. Never really was a match made in heaven, was it? And she's such an opportunist, she probably only ever chased after him to save having to find her own flat. And I suppose she wants you to find her a new one now, too, doesn't she? That's, yes, pretty much the gist of it. And shall out her rent for her? Yes, that's right. Well, I hope you told her what sort of reaction she'd get from us once we'd discussed it, instead of trying to wheedle her way round you in the middle of the night. Oh, yes, yes, and in no uncertain terms as well. Look, I know I should have spoken to you first, but all I did was I went round there as a friend and listened. She poured her heart out, and then I left. We talked, that's all. Well, if you are going to see Susanna in the wee small hours, I'd like to know about it first. Yes, great. And as I said before, I'm sorry I should have had the courtesy to speak to you before, but I just, I just didn't think. All right, come in. Again, I'm afraid. <laughs> and me, come to hold his hand. Uh, before you ask, there's been no news, not towards old Jackie Corkill. I don't suppose you've had any faxes, have you? No, nothing, I'm afraid. Have you got something else you want to send? Yeah, just these, please. Right. It really is very good of you. Yeah, and the number's on there. OK, no problem. It's just to a couple of them lawyers in Bangkok, you know, inquiring about the fees and stuff. It must be a huge worry. You're not kidding. So you still got your body in the crate, eh? Oh, yeah, I can't <laughs> wait for Mum and Dad to get back to get it out of here. Do you know what's in it, yes? No, the suspense is killing us. All right, there you are. Should be coming out there and soon. Max, can you um, give us a hand here, darling? Keep an eye on it, because I've really got to finish putting those shells up. Oh, I'm sorry. You must be really fed up with us. No, it's no problem, honestly. Is it, Max? No, of course not. Ah, uh, oh, looks like it's uh, come through OK. <coughs> oh, great. Right, uh, well, we'll get off then. Um, Thanks again, Max. You really are our lifeline at the moment. <laughs> Bye. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry to bother you, but we really do appreciate it. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Thanks again, guys. Right. Got a moment. Um, <clears throat> Joe, go on. Fire away. I need you to talk to you because nobody else knows. Why? What's that? I went back into town last night trying to find that girl. <sighs> trying to get myself out of this mess. I ended up getting arrested. No. <sighs> Soliciting is going to court. Max, how are you going to explain that to your missus? God knows. What am I going to do? Max? I'm coming. Well, if you need a good solicitor, I've got a couple of contacts in Bangkok. <laughs> Sit down. She feels a bit hot, you know. She's all red on that side of her face. Are you sure that's not where she's been lying? Well, she hasn't let me pull her down long enough to get like that. I say, I mean, I don't know. You're supposed to be the experienced dad, aren't you? Well, I don't know what to suggest, please. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ah, what's he doing to you, the big, horrible brute? Now, listen to her. Oh, and what's a little belter like you making all that racket for? She's been like that for hours. Come on, now. Come on. Where's your mum? She's in Bristol. I've got her for a few days. You are? You mean your mum is letting you look after this little baby on your own? Yeah, well, so. Dear God, and the size of the poor thing. Look, I can't manage you know, Julia, and if I get stuck, I've got mech, haven't I? <laughs> no wonder she's crying, the poor mite, with two great monsters like you breathing all over her. Come on, sweetheart, then. Come on, then. It is a beauty she is. Fire You don't mind me coming over, do you, Jack? I've seen Jimmy getting off before. Of course I don't. Have you heard something? Afraid not. All quiet on the eastern front. Have you been managing to get any sleep? Not a lot. If only we knew something, Jack. How they are, where they are, anything. 
the way of feeling this about you much more it must be like for them. One of us at least should be over there, you know. I know. I keep telling Bev that, but our Jacqueline keeps shouting me down, says the consulate told her we can do more good for them back here. I don't know what we should be doing for the best, Ron. Yeah, but we're not getting anywhere back here, are we, Jack? I mean, all we've got is a list of lawyers' names, and what good is that if we can't even sit down and talk to them? It's a disgrace. They won't be charging peanuts either, you know. Well, we'll have to find it from somewhere. I don't know. Whole sorry mess doesn't bear thinking about. It's really hitting Jimmy hard, this, you know. I've never seen him so low. At least he's on the way back now. Now you're back, he is. You always stand by him, don't you, Jack? I think God must have given you a double dose of patience and a triple dose of loyalty. He was ready to kill himself, you know. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. To do us all a favour. But I've got him through the worst of it, I think. He's really pulling the stops out now, Ron. Whatever needs doing to set them free, he'll be doing it. Yeah, well, I suppose we'll all be doing what we can. You're looking tired, you know. You all right? Well, I'm beginning to feel the pressure, if I'm honest. If I haven't said anything to Bev, she'll only start to worry, but... The way things are going, Jack, I can see it coming. This lot will put me in an early grave. Right. I'll get off. See you later, OK? Preferably not laid out on a slab in a morgue. We'll get them back. Have faith, Ron. We'll get there. How is she? Oh, she's been gone any minute now. She's been fighting it for ages. How did you do that? Gave her gums a little rub. <laughs> She's cutting her first tooth. Yeah. You can feel the little bump on her gum. Poor little sausage. Couldn't you tell? Well, yeah, well, I said to Mick, that's what it'd be, didn't I? So what is it, top or bottom? Oh, bottom, middle. Do you know, that brings back memories of my Irene. I was still breastfeeding her when she cut her face. Oh, fancy your mum letting you out of her sight. You're too gorgeous for me. Yeah, well, uh, thanks very much now, Julian. I'll take it home now, eh? I can't believe that she's living with two gay bachelors. No, oh, bachelors, yeah. I mean, she can't be more than seven months old. She's six months old, and she's my daughter. Oh, I think you better come home with her and make sure she survives. Uh, Julia, as much as I appreciate the offer, I mean, I've got super dad standing by, haven't I heard if I need any help? Um, please yourself. Good old-fashioned childcare experience doesn't seem to count for anything these days. I blame that Mr. Spock myself. Good night, sweetie, bye. Thanks for bringing it round, Maxie. It's very good of you. No problem. Hope it's good news. Yeah, so do I. Um, how's things with you? I haven't told Patricia yet. I'm sort of building myself up to it. Yeah, well, best way that, mate. <laughs> Picky moment. Yeah. They've got to be joking. You all right, Mom? Yeah. Just looking at the fees that these lawyers in Bangkok want. This could cost me everything I've got. Oh, more than you anticipated, eh? Too right, it could run into thousands. All right, Ron. Just wondered if I could have a word. Hey. Oh, yeah. I think this has as much to do with you as it does me. Not bad news, is it? But it's not good. What have they done to him? Oh, nothing, nothing. They're still in jail. But it looks like that's where they're going to have to stay, judging by the prices that these lawyers want. Bottom line, and that's just a rough estimate. Three grand! It's criminal charging that. It's them that should be locked up. I don't know what I'm going to do about it. How do you think your mic will be bearing up? Same as your Lindsay, I expect. They'll be going off their heads. Some kind of starvation diet, probably. No proper toilets, no beds, no nothing. Locked away with all kinds of rapists and murderers. And it would only take one nutter, wouldn't it? Just one who wants to go with the white fella. Oh, Michael could never defend himself against someone like that. Keep having nightmares, Miss Hoff. Yeah. Think if 
know what our little Kyle is going through. So you should know. If it wasn't for you, none of this would have happened. Listen, lad. You've got your lad stuck out there. My little girl's out there as well. And okay, all right, I may not have been the best of fathers to her. But she's still my flesh and blood. And Kylie. Oh. Well, you know the score. She should be sitting at home making Mother's Day cards. Not swimming prison camp soup somewhere. You know, I've been inside one. I know what it's like to be locked away from the world. You think everyone's forgotten about you? You're desperate to see a friendly face, just even... just to touch someone, you know? I've been there, I know what it's like. And like I've said, I know how much you've hated me over what happened with Tony. But for the sake of both our kids, there must be some ways we can work together on this. Some way we can get them out. A bit late for the sackcloth and ashes routine, isn't it? Ron, we're in this together. Let's get our kids out together. OK, yeah. But we're together just till Michael and Lindsay get out. But don't you think for one minute that I've either forgiven or forgotten? I don't. Bev will go off her head when she sees how much this is going to cost. <sighs> It'll destroy Jackie. Better go and tell her. Thanks, Rob. Over. Well, no problem. Has something happened? Oh, well, I think we need a house meeting. The Crosbys are on the way back from the world tour. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Patricia mentioned it the other day. I've been sitting here by myself getting more and more worried. Well, I didn't really want to bother you. You know, your dad's worries about Mike. Oh, but Patricia was on at me earlier. She reckons I want to move straight back in here. Well, I suppose we need to come back sometime. But well, we're going to have to have a really good tidy up. Oh, yeah, and start looking for somewhere else. How long have we got? They're back next week. Bev, love, you can't leave stock and soul like this. Some of it's off already. That's money down the drain when we can least afford it. I'm sorry, love. Just my mind's been full with other things. I tried adding up these solicitors' fees twice now and I still can't get it to any less. Yeah, but it's no good having a shop that we never opened, love. All my ordained customers will be off somewhere else before we know it. Just trying to get some normality back into our lives. Jimmy told me about the prices these lawyers are going to charge. I think it's disgusting. Making money out of other people's misfortune. You know, they've got to pay for the keeping food in prison. Gonna take some finding, innit? <sighs> Seems worse seeing it in black and white. Yeah, that's uh, what we wanted to talk about, you know. See if we can't come up with any ideas. Yeah, well, this place will have to go for a start, because what little we've got saved won't go very far. And to be honest with you, I can see us having to sell the house and all. Come on, man. Let's not get carried away. Well, it's about time you reopened this place. There are pensioners have to shop miles away because of you. Meant to be open all hours. We've had a lot on our plate, Julia. I'm not saying you haven't. I'm just saying, you know, about the responsibility you have for your customers. You mustn't take them lightly, that's all. Now, anyway, while I'm here, I want to commiserate with you about what's happened to your poor Michael. Thank you, Julia. I believe they've been put in solitary confinement. We don't know that. It's probably for the best, because they can pick up all kinds in places like that. Ooh, I bet they've never stopped itching. You know, your Michael should have been more careful about who he got hooked up with. Terrible things, drugs. And here with the little girl and all. Is there anything in particular you've come for, Julia? No, I haven't. I do most of my shopping down at the Aldi these days, anyway. Oh, well, that's nice to know, love. Oh? So you don't want my custom anymore, eh? And here's me praying every night for your son to get out of prison. You're so kind. Mind you, I'm not sure that prayers count when the one you're praying for is in a heathen country. Julia! Will you shut yourself up for a minute? You're not wanted here, all right? Oh, I see. So that's how you speak to people who come to offer you comfort and solace. Well, I know not to bother next time.
Look, I have to go into the restaurant. You're quite sure that's where you're actually going this time, yeah? Yes. I want you to know that you can trust me. So this is you swearing under oath that you're not going to go and deal with any crises for Susanna the minute she beckons. Look, what I was saying earlier about last night, well, there was something else. Needed a washer and a tap, did you? I didn't quite manage to say something important to you. What? I love you and I am totally committed to being with you. Well, you should have thought of that before you spent virtually the whole of the night with your ex-wife. Shouldn't you? Yes, I should. I'll be home as soon as I can. Heard that one before. Hey. Fancy you having a tooth especially for me, eh? Yeah. Ah, we make a good team, don't we? Yes. Who needs mums, eh? Here you go. So, back to Bristol for this one tomorrow, then, eh? Well, it was supposed to be, mate, but what with the teething and all that, eh? You spoken to her mum about it? Yeah, yeah, there's no problem. Eh? There's no problem. She, I told her she had the snuffles tonight and all, so it looks like she's had the same bug that Mandy had. I thought that Mandy'd want to see her on Mother's Day, even if she is poorly. Oh, eh, uh, no, 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 she's fine about it, honestly. Said we could pretend it was Father's Day, didn't she? Yeah. She thought she mightn't be up for the journey either, you know. And besides, this little one can't bear to be away from her dad, can you? No. Hey. Yeah, it's better. <laughs> How much have we got in the bank? Not a lot. Well, what about the business? How much could we raise from that? A pittance, compared with what it would have been worth. If I hadn't let it run down. Have you got nothing stashed away for a rainy day? Nothing. Honest. Well, we're going to have to find some money from somewhere, Jimmy. Because after all the grief we've caused John, I don't want him to have to pay one single penny to get their mic house. So however much it's going to cost, we should be paying it. Shouldn't we? Yeah. But how? <sighs> I wish I knew. We'll find a way. Got to. Do you think we might have to sell the house? What a waste that'd be. After all the hard work you put in to make it special and all. Yeah, but it's only curtains and carpets and stuff. At the end of the day, it's people that matter. It's all about the shop. Yeah, well, it might come to that eventually, love. But only as a last resort, I hope. <sighs> eventually, it might come sooner than you think. Price of solicitor's charge. Mate of our Lynn's, she's bought out thousands, only for a compo claim. But if you haven't got the shop, then we've got no income coming from anywhere, have we? But is that, I suppose, yeah? Maybe I could do longer hours in the shop. Then I'd have nobody here to hold me hand, would I? <sighs> There's loads of things we could save on. We could cut down on chockies and biscuits. And... <laughs> it's a nice thought, love, but... We're not going to get far saving on custard creams, are we? Oh, I don't mean that. I mean, when we usually have a treat, well, we can just put the money in a jam jar. <laughs> Wonder what our Michael would think if he could hear us now, eh? After all the grief he's given me over the years. I'd forgive him all that, though. I'd forgive him everything if I could just have him back here now. Hey, you're making yourself feel even worse. At least his mum will be praying for me. Indeed, but towards the cost of the legal expenses. Ah, oh, love. Not under pittance she earns. She was saying it... It seems no time at all since he was just our little boy. Playing with his actual man and then his Lego set. Hey, you'll be all right. But I just... I just feel so guilty, though, love. I feel guilty sitting here with this cup of tea. I feel guilty sitting here in a warm on a comfy chair. I even feel guilty about being able to go out when I want to. Hey, how do you think Mike would feel, you talking like this? But why aren't I by his side, Bev? Where he needs me, that's where I should be, not here, 7,000 miles away. God, we've got to do something more than just sit round on our backsides. Ron, there's nothing we can do. 
I haven't felt like this since our Tony died, you know. And I know half of it's down to just being helpless, but you see, when you're a dad, Bev, and you watch your kids growing up, you know it's your job to protect them. But with our Tony, well, I wasn't there to look after him. I wasn't there when he needed his dad the most. If there was anything I could have done to have saved him, I'd have done it. But I wasn't even there for him. But this time with our Michael, it's different. If there's even the slightest chance of me saving his life, then I've got to do it. Anything. Even if it means selling up and living on the streets or working hand in glove with Jimmy Corkill, I'll do it. Whatever it takes. Channel 4. Go on. Any news? No, nah, nothing. No more from that solicitor in Thailand? Only that fax we got off him. The best page in English. Three grand up front just to get off his backside, that money grab him. I know, hey, listen, don't be worrying. I'm sorting it. I'm selling the taxi fan. How long will that take? Well, quick sale for cash. I reckon I'll be rid of it by the end of the week. A week? I can't bear the thought of him in that L.O. for another day. Another minute, even. I want him out now. Yeah, I know, I know that. I feel the same way, don't I? I'm sick of it all. Waiting up all night for phone calls and faxes that never come. Being fobbed off by some faceless nomad from the embassy. Then being held to ransom by some lawyer who can't even speak bloody English. Why won't anybody talk to us? Tell us what the hell's going on out there? Why doesn't anyone want to help? Listen, uh, I've been having to think. Well, might be where to go. What? Well, how about us talking to a solicitor over here? What good is that going to do us? Michael and Lindsay are in Thailand, aren't they? I know that. But these solicitors, they're professionals, aren't they? Hey? I mean, they'll know the score. They'll be able to go through all the official channels and that. And if we can get one to talk to this lawyer out in Thailand, well, we'll be able to get the ball rolling, won't we? Do you reckon? Where they go, innit? Anything is. Hey, Miss Walt. We're going on a big coach today, aren't we, eh? All the way to Bristol to see your mummy. Your foes? Yeah, just for a quick walk, you know. What about the coach? Well, there's loads of time. And would it be in the last morning, you know, I just thought, well, one last little stroll only around the shops. All right, I'll come with you, get some chewy. Yeah, sound. Yeah, it's not going to be the same without her, is it? You can say that again. I'll tell you what, mate. I've grown quite attached to her. And our Leo and Gemma, they think the world of her. <laughs> yeah, so does her dad, doesn't he, baby? Hey? I'm going to miss you, you know, Mick. I really am. Yeah. Hiya. Hello there. I was just wondering if you'd heard anything else from Mr. and Mrs. Crosby. Well, they haven't phoned. Probably wouldn't be able to get through anyway, with Ron Dixon hogging the phone and fax every hour. Treats the place like a local branch of Amnesty International. Max. Sorry, Rachel. So, they're still coming home tomorrow, then? As far as I know. 
Oh, thank God for that. Get rid of this crate of theirs. Place is like a warehouse. Max, go on, Rachel. So, everything's all right for the party, then? And we can still use the restaurant? Yes, of course you can. Restaurant? Um, I told Rachel she could have a small welcome home party for Mum and Dad. But... Well, actually, it's more of, um, more of a get-together. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. There's only going to be about half a dozen people there. Such short notice. Max, don't be such a stick in the mud. Of course you can have the restaurant, Rachel. Oh, brilliant. Mr and Mrs Cosby were made up. I can't wait. <sighs> Me neither. Right, well, I'll go and tell everyone it's definitely on, and I'll sort out some streamers and stuff. See you later. All right, then. Bye-bye. Right, get these toys away. Patricia, listen, um, let's not fall out over this Susanna thing, eh? It was just a simple misunderstanding. No hard feelings, eh? Right, let's see if we can't knock up next week's column together, eh? Sorry, Max. Things to do. Oh, well, aren't you going to help me? I'm busy. Well, I can't do the column by myself. Well, you could always get someone else to give you a hand. Susanna, maybe. After all, you and she are quite a team these days. It's just an empty shack, isn't it? Oh, come on, lad. It's a going concern. Yeah, going nowhere. You're buying the name. Corky cars, the reputation. Yeah, some reputation. Everybody knows this for all the wrong reasons, and they know how you paid for it and all. Listen, you know I've come clean on all that. That's why I've closed this place down. And now you're trying to flog it to me. Five grand. It's a gift. That's the sort of gift you can do without me. Listen, Sen. You know the score. You know I need that money. It's for Lindsay and Kylie and the Dixon kid. It's to get them a lawyer, get them home. Come on, four grand, because you're a mate. Let's face it, Jimmy, the place isn't worth ten, Bob. You're off to charity, aren't you? And all right, then call it what you like. I'm desperate. Three grand, come on, you've got the cash, you're flush. Jimmy, as much as I feel sorry for Mike and the others, I've got the baby to think of. And the money I got from selling the house is for Ruth's future. I'm sorry, you know what they say. Charity begins at home. Yeah, well, fair dues. Can't say I blame you. Hey, Mick, I don't suppose... Jimmy, don't waste your breath. I'm not interested. Hey, come on, are you two ready to go? Be there now, sir. Where are you off? Gotta go to the bus station. I've gotta take little Ruth back to Bristol today. Yeah, me and Terry are seeing them off. Right, are you all packed, then? Yeah, just gotta get a few things of Ruth from the house. Oh, well, we'll pick it up on the way round, eh? Hey, Terry, have you got a sec? Just want a quick word. Yeah, sure, what is it, Jim? You ever thought of branching out into another line of business? Good little learner to go with your nightclub there. So you can't help us, then? I didn't say that, Mr. Dixon. What I said was me getting involved might not be entirely practical. What the hell does that mean? The Thai legal system is different to ours. I'm not qualified to pass judgment on the merits of your sons and daughters' cases. All I can advise you to do is get in touch with a solicitor in Thailand. Yes, we've tried that, but they're all foreign. Well, they would be, wouldn't they? Look, can't you get hold of a solicitor out there? I can try, but you yourself know how difficult it is. Do you really want to be paying for my time as well as a lawyer's in Thailand? Well, what about legal aid? Don't we qualify for that? I'm sorry. It only applies to cases in this country. So what are we supposed to do, eh? Let our kids rot in jail? Here. Have another look at the list of lawyers the consul gave you. Then phone around. Try and get hold of a lawyer with experience in this particular area, one with a good reputation. But you'll have to pay for quality. Look, Mr. Forrester, we've done all that already. Now, we're just going round in circles here. Can't you understand? Just try and be patient. Be patient? My son is rotten in the black hole of Calcutta with his girlfriend and a three-year-old kid, and he wants me to be patient. Mr. Dixon, I know it must be difficult for you. You what? You don't know anything about people's feelings. All you're interested in is making money out of people's misery. Ron, take it easy. Your lot wouldn't do anything for nothing, would you? You're all a bunch of crooks. Come on, Jackie, let's get out of here. Thanks for your time. You've been a great help. A memorable, a, a gastronomic experience. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Ow! Damn! You all right? God, come bang my leg on this blasted crate. And could your parents are coming back tomorrow. Get this thing shifted. Oh, nothing about it'll be nice to see your mother and father. Nothing about, oh, I wonder if they had a nice holiday. Just the same old self-centred Max, eh? No one else's feelings matter. Look, can't we just forget all this? I said I was sorry. But she really turned on the tears, didn't she, poor little Susanna? 
I could have good mind to get on the phone and give her a piece of my mind. No, you can't. <laughs> no, don't do that. I mean, um, what's the point? Uh, only cause bad feeling between you and me. Yeah, just what you want, eh? The scheming little... God help her next time I see her. <sighs> Gosh, that's the time. Must be going. But it's early. You haven't finished your column. Wine merchants, Sam. They're having a tasting. New World Wine said I'd be there. All right, well, give me five minutes. I'll come with you. To help take my mind off you-know-who. Do you know, I don't think that'd be a good idea. I'm late enough as it is. Probably be over by the time I get there. But you know how much I like going to wine tastings? <sighs> Sorry, I should have given you more notice. Look, they do these wine tastings all the time. We'll go together next time, eh? Promise? Y yeah, I promise. Um, I'll ring you when I get to the restaurant. Um, and please, no more mention of you-know-who. I'll try, if you will. No, you know, I just leave it on the pram. I'm okay. Well, why don't you just leave it there while you go and get your ticket to me? No, look no, after you're it. You're all right. I'll go do it myself. I'm not sure, mate. Yeah, yeah, I'll be all right. Come on. Come well, on. I'll have a baby while we're here, eh? He just has to have an out in town. Oh, yeah, nice one. Check out a few of the old dogs, eh? And if you play your cards right, I'll even treat you to an orange juice. Oh, hey, thanks very much. <laughs> right, come on, Ruthie. Say bye bye to your uncle, Matthew, uncle Terry. Come on. See you, Ruthie. Bye. Bye. All right, boys, thanks for the lift anyway, mate. I'll see you tomorrow, OK? Ta-da, yeah, okay. ta All right, mate. Listen, uh, say hello to Mandy for me and I uh, hope she's feeling better. Yeah, will do, OK? Ta-da, then. Ta-da. See you now. Yeah. Ta-da. So what do you reckon? I'm what? Sinbad. Seemed a bit down, didn't he? Do you reckon? Yeah. Having to take Ruthie back. I reckon he's got more attached to it than he realises. Still, I think it's for the best, don't you? Yeah, that's good. Hey, come on. They're all the same, these people. Couldn't give a monkeys about helping anyone. Money, that's all they're interested in. Come on, please, take it easy. Bev, how can I take it easy? Our Michael's counting on me. I'm his only hope. Well, you're not giving much use to him in your sickbed, though, are you? It's just so frustrating, love. No one wants to know. Come on, love. I know you've got to stick with it, but we'll just slow it down, eh? Don't take things so personally. I just feel like I'm banging my head against a brick wall. Oh, no, love. No, oh, no. Hiya. Hiya. Can I just have a bottle of water, please? Yeah. At 60 pence, please, Katie. There you go. Um, while you're both here, can I have a word? Yeah, sure. Yeah, fire away, love. <laughs> well, I've been thinking, you know, me staying at yours, maybe it's time I moved on. What's brought this on? Nothing, really. All right, love, I know I've been busy with the other thing, but don't let that push you out, eh? You're still more than welcome, you know. Oh, no, it's nothing to do with that, honest. It's just because I'm feeling much better, and maybe it's time I stood on my own two feet again. Are you sure you're up to it? I'm going to move back to the bungalow with Jackie and Rachel. You're only two doors away, aren't you, so if I'm feeling down or anything, I know where to come. Make sure you do. Our door's always open for you, isn't it, Ron? Yeah, of course it is, love. Thanks. Hey, listen. I don't want you wasting all the good work you've done, so I'll be asking Rachel and Jackie to keep an eye on you and don't want you slipping back into your old ways. No chance. Listen, thanks both of you. I couldn't have handled all this without your help. You've been really good with me. Like your mum and dad or something. <laughs> don't be daft. And, eh, less of the mum, thank you very much. Big sister will do fine. I'll see you later. OK, OK, I'm coming. Has she phoned you? Sorry? Has she spoken to you on the phone? Has who spoken to me on the phone? Patricia. What? Has she spoken to you on the phone? No. Oh, thank God for that. Max, what's all this about? It's a long story. A very long story. I think I better come in. You better go forward, make more than that. Me and you, we stay together. Hey, you're all right, mate. You can leave them. Got to change your plan. We're staying, aren't we? Hey? Come on, mate. Yeah, come on. Come on, then.
myself. I was here till three o'clock in the morning. There was a problem with the children. Yes, Max. I think I've got the gist of it. Well, we've got to get the story straight for Patricia. We've got the story straight. You've been through it a thousand times. Now, are you going to tell me what all this is about? No, I can't. Well, what do you mean? You can't. It's very difficult, Susanna, believe me. What have you been up to? Hmm? Please. Out till the early hours? Big secret from Patricia? No, no, no I can't say anymore. Max, you haven't. Have you? Haven't what? Been a naughty boy. What do you mean? Well, it's another woman, isn't it? No! I know that guilty look. Come clean, Max. Okay, yes. Well, I mean, no. Sort of. <sighs> oh, God, what a mess. Yeah, there's Birkenhead over there. Those big cranes, that's Camel Laid, where all the big ships were built. I used to come down here when I was a kid, you know. I wasn't much older than you. Me and all the other kids from my home. Used to play off ground tick down here. Used to run around for hours. Uh, and then we go to New Brighton for the day on the ferry. Me? Take our bottle of water with us. <laughs> that was our holidays. Uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. It was dead busy. Everybody going to New Brighton for the day. Families out for walks. Mums, dads, and the kids. That oh, was great. Of course, I didn't have a proper family. I didn't have a mum and dad. Not like you, eh? Eh? <laughs> God, listen to me, I'll be crying into the Mersey next. Come on, what am I like? Loads more to see. Hey, yeah. You having a good time? Yes, you are. Your dad. Humiliation. They took my photograph, my fingerprints. Treated me like a common criminal. All right, I was stupid and naive. I didn't deserve that. Oh, Max. Yeah, I know. Whole thing sounds ludicrous, doesn't it? Unbelievable. Hmm. One lie after another. No. No, it's just... Well, I don't know what to say. Oh, Pad, I believe you. I do believe you. You do? Yes. Nobody could make up a story like that. Really? Really. Anyway, you, curb crawling. I know you've always had an eye for the opposite sex, but no. Not your style. The only thing I don't understand is why haven't you told Patricia the truth? I'm just waiting to pick the right moment. You don't think she'd believe you, do you? I don't know. You heard what happened. The whole thing sounds fantastical. But I believe you. Why shouldn't she? It's so frustrating. I mean, I'm innocent, for God's sake. I'm frightened to talk to her. And what am I supposed to say? Tell her what you told me. The truth. No, I can't. Max, you've got to. Before somebody else does. What do you mean? If you're going to court, your name's going to be all over the papers. It's better Patricia hears it from you than from someone else. Max, go home and tell her the truth. Before it's too late. 
Oh, it's going to be great, the three of us living together again. Oh, and it'll be hard if the Cosby's throw us out. Well, three poor, defenceless girls like us. Don't G on making us homeless. Oh, and I've checked the tenancy agreements again, so we're all right for another month anyway. Then after I've softened them up at the party tomorrow. Can't beat a bit of emotional blackmail, eh, Rach? Who, me? It never crossed my mind. <laughs> They are. This was in the iron cupboard. Oh, thanks. Now, listen, you two. I don't want you leading Katie astray. Who was? Bev. Yes, you. And don't worry. I'll be around to visit you all the time. Make sure you're OK. There's no need. There's every need. Don't want you getting ill again, do we? Hey, Mr Dixon, are you going to come to the Cosby's Welcome Home party tomorrow? Yeah. I don't know, love. Uh, I'm not really in the mood. Oh, come on, Dad. It'll do you good. Oh, it'll take your mind off things, love. You know, just an hour or two. I don't know, love. It doesn't seem right going out enjoying ourselves. It's just that I had a bit of an idea. Well, you know what's happened to your mic and everything. I was thinking that maybe Mr Cosby would be able to help you. How? Well, he's dead organised, isn't he? And he knows loads about the law and everything. He was one of the people who helped get my mum and Beth out of jail. Might be worth talking to him. Hey, that's right, yeah. Hey, maybe Bing is the man for the job. So they won't reach. Might just come to that party after all. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How's the wine tasting? I didn't go. What? Were you too late? No, no not exactly. Is everything all right? Listen, Patricia, there's something I need to talk to you about. What? I, I need to talk to you. Oh, God. What is it? Patricia? Now, I remember, look after yourself. And we're always here for you. You know that, don't you? Oh, all right, Dad. Thanks, Mr. Dixon. Ron, uh, Patricia's here to see you. Hiya, Pat. What can I do for you, love? Oh, uh, well, this came through from Thailand. I think you'd better read it. Dad, what's wrong? Oh, no, they can't. Ron, what is it? They put the poor kid into care. Here we go. Home sweet home, eh? So mad. What are you doing here? I live here, remember? I know that, but you're supposed to be halfway to Bristol by now. Change your plan, mate. Ruth's staying a bit longer. Oh, good. Well, she started kicking up at the coach station, and I didn't think she was up for a four-hour journey, so... Why does she seem like that when we left? Yeah, well, uh, you know what babies are like? One went to find the next to screaming blue murder. I think she's still seething. So, uh, where have you been so now? Well, we've been everywhere, haven't we, baby? Went to Pierhead, went to the Albert Dock, we went to Matthew Street. Hey, she's got a photo, you'll have to take me to some Japanese tourists outside the cabin. Oh, nice one. Yeah. So, listen, have you phoned Mandy, let her know you're not coming? Uh, yeah, I phoned her while we were out. You know, I told her we'd bring her back to town when she's feeling a bit better. Better? She looks all right to me. Yeah, well, I think she's got a bit of a cold coming on, you know. I'll check and see how she is in the morning, all right? Hey, look. What do you think of this? Hey, dead cute, eh? <laughs> Little Kylie. How dare on her own? They can't do that to a kid of her age. They've done it. No. I'm not having it. You what? I'm not going to just sit here and let them put my granddaughter into care. God knows where she could end up. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to Thailand. You what? How? On a bloody plane. How do you think? I don't know why we've left it this long. Love, we haven't got the money. Not till I sell the taxi business. Well, I've got this, haven't I? And how are you going to pay it off? I'll worry about that later. Once I've got my granddaughter home, I'm going to Thailand, Jimmy, and nothing's stopping me. You're right, Jackie. We should have done it ages ago. I'm coming with you. Oh, no, Ron. You haven't been well. Hey, it's my kid out there, and all remember. Ron, you're not well enough to travel. Jackie, I want to see our Michael. If you go out there, you'll come back in a box, and I'm not going to let that happen. She's fine, you know. I'll go. Hey, no way. Not having you out there without me, you'll screw everything up. You what? All right, you two, that's enough. I'm a big girl now. I'll go on my own. You get on that phone and get me a taxi. Where to? The airport. You what? You're going now. As soon as I brush my teeth and pack me nicer, yes? I'm going to Thailand and I'm going to bring Kylie home. <laughs> Thank you.
Brookside the Backstage Tour, which is the new Brookside video, is out in the shops now. Or send a check made payable to BSS for $12.99 to Brookside the Backstage Tour, P.O. Box 6120, London W52GJ. Don't wait up brown bread. Wait, please, mate. Can't be. Can't be what? It is. It's him. It's who? Max Farnham. He's in the paper. Hiya. Got you some brekkie. All right, Grace. Hiya. Hiya. Come in. Hiya. Hiya. I've got you some muesli. Yeah, I've got cornflakes here. Oh, this is homemade. Full of fruit and nuts. Pack with goodness, that, you know. Set you for the day. Oh, it can't be. God, it is. It's him. Max Farnham, celebrity restaurant, sir. Yeah, this comes well and truly cut. After being picked up with a prostitute in a notorious red light area. You have to turn up for the boots, eh? You can say that again. What's he doing with that phone? He's got a lovely wife, I know. Yeah, but what about those celebrities and that? Those famous people. Haven't they got gorgeous wives? Models, like. Still doesn't stop them, does it? Mm -hmm. Strange, though, isn't it? Like, somebody thinks he's got everything going for them, going out and doing that. Uh, we don't know the half of it, mate. What do you mean? Well, we don't know what goes on behind closed doors, do we? I mean, Max and Patricia may seem happy enough, but for all we know, they might have all kinds of problems. Yeah, but still no reason to go out and pick up a prozzy. Sin, believe me. Most of the fellas that go cruising them streets are not single like us. They're married men. Mm. I mean, my wife doesn't understand me. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see if Patricia understands Max after she's seen this. <laughs> yeah. Well, sounds like Ruthie wants a breakfast. Hey, Sin, um, when are you taking her back to Bristol? Uh, I don't know, later today, maybe, why? I was just thinking, you know, uh, Mandy must be missing her. Oh, no, Mandy's sound about her. I've been on the phone to her every day. I've been keeping her in the petty, you know. I know, but I mean, all this new stuff you've bought for her. Baby alarms and that. But over the top if she's only staying one more day, eh? Yeah, well, I'll need that stuff for the next time she comes up to stay. And, uh, I bought this because she's got a bit of a cold. But you can never be too sure with babies, can you? All right, Rudy, Daddy's coming. According to Bev, Jackie Corfield flew out to Thailand last night. Waste of time and money, if you ask me. Max, the poor woman's granddaughter's in care in a foreign country. She's gone to bring her home. You know, the authorities out there are hard line. I mean, they won't budge easily, Patricia. No, I think Jackie Corkill's in for a nasty surprise. Oh, good. At last. My newspaper. <sighs> oh, they've gone and delivered the wrong one again. It must be a new newspaper boy. <sighs> Do you know, I am sick of the sight of this rag. Absolute garbage. Look, my night of passion with soccer star, well, that's it. Changing news agents. Right, that's me. Uh, don't forget to pick up my dry cleaning tickets by the phone. No, yeah, I won't forget. Um, I'll see you at the restaurant at two. I'm going to arrange for a taxi for Mum and Dad. Take them straight there from the airport. <laughs> Couldn't arrange for a pickup truck as well, could you? Get rid of your father's box of tricks. One more day, Max. I'll get Dad to shift it tomorrow. Well, one more day won't kill me, I suppose. Anyway, don't want to spoil the welcome home party. Party? Well, I thought you said it was just a gathering, half a dozen people. Well, you know, maybe a bit more like 15. Do you know how much that'll cost us? Max, this is for my mother and father. It's to welcome them home. It's a special occasion. Oh, Where's right. the harm in that, eh? Well, 15, and that's the limit. Thanks. See you later. You're going out right now? Yeah, going to get my hair done. Oh, right. 
that a problem? No, no, I was just thought I'd fancied a bit of a chat. What about? About our little misunderstanding the other night, you know, about the, uh, coming in late. <laughs> Max, and... I thought we'd agreed not to mention it again. Yeah, I know, but I... Max, it's finished. Forgotten. Now, I don't want to be late for my appointment. Actually, I'll take that. Give me something to read while the curlers are in. See you at the restaurant. Yeah. Any news yet from your Jackie? No, nothing. No phone calls? No, she'd have only just got there. Thought she might have been to the prison, seeing our Mike like. Yeah, we've got to get Carney sorted out first, hasn't she? She's defo going to visit the others. Once she's got Carney, she's going to go straight to the prison. Hope to God she gets in to see them. Listen, the mood my Jackie was in when she left here, nobody's going to stop her seeing Lindsay and your Mike. Even if it's just for a couple of minutes. Let them know we're doing everything we can to get him out. Hey, they know we won't let him down. We're gonna get him out of that place. Too right, we will. Listen, I better get back, man the phone, in case that lawyer gets in touch. Nice. Listen, if Jackie rings, I'll let you know straight away. Yeah. Hey, Ron. Take it easy, eh? Yeah. Oh! Maxi Farnham? Well, fancy that. Him up in court for curb crawling, and I always thought he was such a gentleman. Well brought up like. The rat. You know, me and Ron have known for a while, but I'm not one to gossip, as you know. Oh, and him with a young family. Well, thank God little Alice is too young to understand. It's a sin. How will he ever be able to put his face in public again? I'll never know. Well, how about poor Pat? Oh. I mean, it's a shame, isn't it? She's not even going to be able to leave the front door, is she? Everyone talking about her behind her back. Oh. Hi. Oh, um, Patricia. <laughs> Hi, you oh. Pat. <laughs> Surely not another article about Princess Diana. Why don't they leave her alone? We were just reading our stars, weren't we? That's right. <laughs> Big out of the page, you know? <laughs> It's a load of rubbish, really. I can't be bothered with it. Oh. But very good for the gossip. Didn't know you read that. Oh, they delivered it by mistake. Let me put it in the bin for you, then. Oh, no. I'll hang on to it, flick through it, catch up with the scandal. Right, where do you want me? Oh, well, you just take a seat here, lovely. Okay. I'll take your coat. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> He's dead nice. You know, just different. He's always telling jokes and funny stories and that. Oh, he sounds like a good laugh. Yeah, he is. And guess what? He's into writing poetry as well. Oh, he's a poet, really? Yeah, he showed me some of his stuff. It's brilliant. It's really good. He's had some of it published. And he writes for the Tranmere fanzine as well. He's really talented. <laughs> God, he sounds like Superman or something. Are you sure there's nothing he can't do? Mm, I won't stop talking about him, have I? <laughs> Sorry, it's just... Well, he's been really good for me. That's why I don't want to miss my appointment today, because things are going so well. No, I think it's really good you're into him. Especially if he's helping you get better. Yeah, I don't know. But I promise I'll change the subject. No <laughs> more Mark. Let's talk about someone else. Mm, who like Max Farnham? Oh, God, I know. Poor Patricia, eh? She's dead nice, isn't she? Mm. Do you want me to get that? Yeah. Hello there. Rachel in. Um, Rachel, there's someone to see you. Oh, hiya. Um, about this afternoon. Uh, oh, is it off? Pardon? Well, the party. No. Why? Should it be? No, no reason. I just asked you that. I thought you might have wanted to cancel it. No. Anyway, Patricia was telling me that you were expecting about 15 guests. Uh, yeah, I've got the list of names in my bedroom. I won't be a minute. <laughs> oh, gosh, this rag. Is there ever anything decent in it, eh? Um, no, we just... Get it for the telly. Mm-hmm. Oh, what's this? Uh, yeah, it's about 12. Uh... Oh, right. I was reading that. It's about Keith Floyd and the exploding super. Oh, you don't want to believe anything you're reading there. <laughs> yeah, it's all rubbish. Most of it's made up. <laughs> How cynical. And from one so young, eh? So little dude's still here. He hasn't taken her back to Bristol. Claims he had a cold. You know what? Between me and you, Ted, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Oh, well, I think he made this cold stuff up. I think it's just an excuse so that he can hold on to it. Oh, are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. 
You want to see all the stuff he's brought in? Turn his room into a nursery. Looks like he's planning on staying for longer than a couple of days, I'm telling you. Lovely morning for it, isn't it? Hey? Oh, right. Nice one, Max. <laughs> All right, Max. I don't suppose either of you have read a newspaper this morning, have you? Uh, yeah. Uh, just the sports section, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's all I've read, you know, the footy. Ah, shame. Only I, I thought there might have been something in the papers about, uh, you know what. Hey? You what? You know. Do we? Yeah. Uh, Mike Dixon and the Cork Hill girl. Any news from Thailand? <laughs> right. I didn't like to ask Ron. Uh, no, not as far as I know, uh, Max. No. Apparently, Jackie Corkill's gone over there trying to get her granddaughter back. Yeah, got some bottle going up there on the top. Yeah, let's just hope she gets that kid home, mate. I wouldn't hold my breath. They're not known for the leniency out there. She might be coming back empty handed. See you later. Yeah, see you, Max. See you, Max. You have read the paper, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Page 10. <laughs> Max is in for one hell of a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Everything all right, love? Oh, yes. 20 things you didn't know about Princess Diana. <laughs> hey, I didn't know she shopped at Max Spencer's. Fancy that. And we've got one in Liverpool as well. <laughs> Julia. Page is shop. Page eight. 20 things you didn't know about Lady Di. We're really looking forward to your mum and dad's party, aren't we, Julia? Oh, yeah. I got my party frock on specially. <laughs> Article on, um, you know, SEX, big O, G spots, and all that. Well worth a read. I'll take this, it'll do for the used tea bags. That's all it's good for. Oh. Um, have a nice cup of coffee while you read your magazine. Uh, yeah, lovely, thank you. I'll just be two ticks. Oh, uh, I'll give you a hand. Hey, look who it is. Bondrum Willie himself. Hi, Max. Hi. How's it going? Well, both giving me this to read. How to get hot between the sheets. Obviously thinks our sex life needs spicing up a bit. Ah. Scandal. Look at him. As if butter wouldn't melt. How could anyone do that to the wife? What a pig. So, uh, do you think I should give Mandy a ring? Well, I'll leave it for now. He's probably being overprotected, isn't it? I mean, you must have been like that yourself. Yeah, I know. I mean, one of the kids sneezes and keeps him off school, don't you? Exactly. I mean, it's not as if he's experienced with babies, is it? So he's bound to be a bit more careful, isn't he? Yeah. Maybe I've got it wrong here. Yeah. But he'll probably take it back to Bristol tomorrow, and then that'll be the end of it. Listen, I'm going to get off and get these tickets sorted for the Newcastle game, all right? All right, nice one. See you later. Yeah, I'll see you later. Right. Now I'm gone. No need to... Yes, I do. I had the doctor out to a first thing. Mandy, there's no need to come up. Don't panic. She's fine. It's just a little bit of a bug, that's all. Yeah. She's... Well, she's gonna be as safe as houses with me and Mick, isn't she? Well, the doctor doesn't reckon she should travel. So I'm gonna keep her here for a few more days. Yes, yes, I do. And the guy says, well, one's for me, and the other four are for my brothers who can't be here. Anyway, the next day he goes in, and he just orders a four. So the barman comes up to him and says, have one of your brothers died, man? And the guy says, no, it's me. I've given up drinking. It's <laughs> <laughs> terrible laugh. That can't be that bad. Made you laugh. Where did you get all your jokes from? Oh, I don't know. Just hear them, you know. Usual stuff. Mates in a pub. It's weird. It's like going to get me a jam, this. Get your head around what? <sighs> well, you know. You, this. I mean, you've got some big mad degree, you're a counsellor than that, but you're just a normal, a good laugh like. What were you expecting? A bully professor in a white coat and nil-nil specs? I don't know what he expected, but I didn't think I'd be having a laugh, talking about football and poetry and all sorts. Yeah, well, we're just getting to know each other, aren't we? I mean, if we're going to be mates, trust each other, we've got to know what makes each other tick. Yeah, I suppose so. It still feels funny, then. What does? 
Well, I know loads about you, what you're into and everything. And I know you've got a degree. Well, I'm not being nasty, but... What do you know about what I've been through? Only what you've told me, which uh, isn't much. Well, I don't mean that. I mean... What makes you such an expert, just doing a degree and reading books and that? I've read books that are coming out of my ears, and to be honest, most of them are useless. You are? Well, theory's one thing, isn't it? Practice is another. What do you mean? Personal experience. Believe me, you can't beat it. What personal experience? You've got the same problem as me. No, but, um... My sister did. Your sister? She had an eating disorder. Yeah. What happened? She, um, she starved herself to death. <laughs> All front on the pair out. Skin like a rhinoceros. Someone should have a word, you know, put the poor sods out of the misery. Everybody talking behind the backs. I mean, Max might well be innocent, you know. Oh, yeah, and pigs might fly. Anyway, it's nothing to do with you. Or anyone else, for that matter. That's right. You can't go poking your nose into other people's business. Ah, uh, I suppose not. I mean, look at him. The bare-faced cheek. It's all over like a rash. He's got no shame whatsoever. She doesn't know the half of it. Mind you, he hasn't half changed. I mean to say, have you seen the state of him? The right flash, Harry. Shh. Everyone, the taxi's here. Right, don't forget, a big surprise. Yeah. Surprise! surprise! <laughs> Good grief. Welcome, my own Oh, dad. Patsy, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Mr. Crosby. Hello, Rachel. All right, Bing. Hiya, Dave. You eat, Dave! David, where's she? Ah, yes. Oh, yes, Dad, where is Mum? Uh, Papua New Guinea, would you believe? What's she doing there? No, 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 she's perfectly all right. She just decided to extend a holiday by a couple of months. Months? Yes, Rita. When your mother said holiday of a lifetime, she really meant uh, a lifetime. It was just me and my two sisters. Me and Anne were OK, but Meg... She couldn't handle my parents not being around. She was younger than us. The baby of the family. <laughs> it was up to us to look after her. But we let her down. We let her get sick. But you were just a kid yourself. And we didn't try hard enough. Just dismissed it. <laughs> just looking for attention, we said. She was getting worse and... By the time we realised it, it was too late. Mark, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. <laughs> oh, it's OK. It's not your fault. It does me good to get it off my chest now and then. You all right? <laughs> it's supposed to be me cancelling you. <laughs> I'm glad you told me about your sister. I feel like I can really trust you now. Yeah, well... We'll not get very far if we have secrets from each other, eh? Yeah, right. No secrets. Liverpool decided to bring home their photographic and graphic design business literally to their back garden. They installed a large porter cabin, which they'll convert into processing rooms, a studio and offices. And of course the neighbours weren't too pleased to see this new addition to the garden furniture appearing over the garden fence. But Bill and Paul can assure them that all the planning permission has been requested and granted. Before this, they'd have had to travel around in an old van where they had to house all their equipment. The new spacious facilities will provide... Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, hey, all right, Mick, I didn't think you were coming. There you go. Oh, sorry, mate. I've been held up with the cash and carry. It took me ages. <laughs> no Sinbad? Yeah, no. It's probably too busy telling yarns to Monday. You what? I heard him talking through the phone. Yeah. He's told her a pack of lies, says. What Sinbad does? Yeah, I mean, he told her to get the doctor on to move. Oh, he never. And that she wasn't fit to travel. And she was going to have to stay up here for a couple more days. 
Man, they must be out of their mind. What's he playing at? I don't know, Tez. But the way he's carrying on, there's no way to take that kid to Bristol. Mm. Gentlemen. Ladies, more champagne. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. You're very kind. <laughs> Just put my cork. Oh, there you go. Cheerio. Oops. <laughs> mm. Cheers. 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 Right, so, all this was your idea, young lady. Yeah, I thought it'd be a nice surprise for you. Is that the only reason why you went to all this trouble? Eh? Hey? You wouldn't be trying to soften me up, would you, Rachel? Well, what do you mean? I mean that it might just have crossed your mind that I would want to move back into the bungalow, which means you and your young companions having to find alternative accommodation. All right. I'd never thought of that. <laughs> Good try. But uh, I should advise you not to get too comfortable. I shall be round tomorrow to sort out my living arrangements. Well, you do want to move back in? Oh, it is my home. I'm sorry. Oh, great. Well, I'd better make the most of tonight then, hadn't I? Then I'm going to be homeless tomorrow. Uh, Dad, I'm sorry. I've never spoken to you. It's all these people. So, what's going on with Mum? Oh, your mother's fine, dear. But who's she with? Uh, the Petersons, uh, Eric and Tessa. Um, retired couple from Peterborough. Used to be teachers. Perfectly respectable couple. It's on the boring side for me. So, Mum's in Papua New Guinea with them. There's nothing I could do about it, I'm afraid. Uh, she's been bitten by the backpacking bug. You didn't fall out, did you? No, no, not at all. Well, not really. Dad, what's going on? When is Mum coming back? Patsy, please, darling, stop worrying about your mother. She's fine. She'll be back by the summer now. How are you? Fine. Everything all right? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. You don't know, do you? No what? I'm sorry. I'm going to have to be a real party pooper. I uh, borrowed the taxi driver's newspaper on the way back from the airport. I don't understand. Page 10. Might be best to go downstairs away from all the crowd. Looks like I've called myself a whopper. Only this time, it's not getting away. Oh, what are you doing? I'm banging you up for the night. Oh, we are. First thing, tomorrow morning, you are going to the busies and you're going to cough for planting new drugs. And this time tomorrow night, you'll be halfway to Bangkok. And all Lindsay and Kyle will be on their way out. Trisha? Trisha? Get me out here.
It's Channel 4. It's your mother's choice, but uh, I must confess it is rather growing on me. We uh, bought it before we went our separate ways. Dad, what exactly did happen with you and Mum? Nothing. Dad. <laughs> Just a slight clash of personalities, that's all. We each wanted different things out of the holiday. Well, what do you mean? Well, your mother's all for campfires and sleeping bags, and uh, I prefer air conditioning and decent beds. The idea of trekking across the foothills of the Himalayas with the Petersons wasn't exactly my idea of fun. Don't worry, she'll come to her senses soon enough. And I'll be out of your hair in no time. Dad, there's no need to rush off. No, 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 no. I'll uh, sort something out with the girls next door. You need this place to yourselves. You're frightened of being injured by flying crockery. Really picked my moment to return, didn't I? Oh, good grief. What an ass this. Don't worry. I'll have it out of your way by this afternoon. Patricia, Patricia, please, look, we've got to talk about this. Look, you can't go on ignoring me. We, we, you've got to give me a chance to explain. Look, please. Like, I'm a victim of circumstance. I've done nothing wrong. Patricia, please, I'm innocent. It's all a mistake. David, look, you've got to believe me. Could you talk to Patricia? I'll be damned if I will. But you've got to. Just tell her nothing happened. What? With your track record? You don't believe me either. You're a philanderer, for God's sake. You just can't keep your hands to yourself. I am innocent, I swear. Oh, save your pathetic protestations for the magistrates. Call yourself a man. Right, you move. Ah! Oh, God, you're going to break me off! Yeah. Don't stop your wind, and I'll oh. break your flaming neck. Oh, and I'll be the first to help him at all. <laughs> what on earth is going on? We've got our man. <laughs> this is the scumbag who planted drugs on my granddaughter, his only oh. daughter. Talk it, for heaven's sake, you'll break the man's off. Oh, so what? <laughs> it only needs one good one to sign a confession, doesn't it? Uh, you're going to force a confession out of him? Hey, if we have to, we're going to take him down to a cop shop, and he's going to tell him everything. Uh, Ron, Ron, please, now listen. I understand, I sympathise with your predicament, but you are breaking every rule in the book. Oh, yeah. And what book is that, Bing? The one that says it's okay to plant heroin on a three-year-old kid? Oh, I'm wasting time. Uh, this is barbaric! Stay out of it, Bing! Get in. Oh, look, everything's all right, Bing. He's just going to set the record straight. What you are doing is very heavy-handed. I've a damn good mind to report you, you know. Bing, report me to the Queen of Sheba, if you like. I couldn't give a toss. Brute force and ignorance never sold anything. Please don't do this to me. Look, it's all a mistake. I haven't done anything wrong. I swear to God. Patricia, please just listen to me. Just let me explain to you, please. Well, let you explain why you went with a prostitute. No. Or let you explain why you tried to hide the truth from me. It wasn't or let like you explain that. why I was humiliated and lied to in front of all our friends and neighbours. Patricia, please. Max, I am sick of the sight of you backtracking and groveling. Go to hell. Oh, that little one isn't still with you, is she? Uh, yes, Julia, she is, yeah. Uh, she had a bit of a cold. I didn't think she was up to travelling, you know. So. Ah, bless her. This is the time of the year they get, Paulie. Changing of the season, see? Near cast a clout until March is out. You what? Rabbi Bames. See, I'm not as stupid as a look. It means keep them well wrapped up until March is out. That's the secret. Right, sir. Oh, I pass. Oh, I pat, love. You're right, love. I'm fine, thanks. Oh, I'm so sorry about all that stuff in the papers. They've no right poking the nose into other people's lives like that. Anyway, I wouldn't worry, love, if I were you, because no one takes a blind bit of notice of the rubbish that they print in those things. Anyway. Yeah, see you, Pat. That's right, love. 
You carry on about your business, head held high. You've got nothing to be ashamed of. Oh, and listen, if ever you want a little chat, woman to woman, you know where to find me. Thanks. I'll bear it in mind. Poor Pat, eh? Oh, and such a lovely looking woman and all. And what about poor little Alice, eh? As innocent as a newborn lamb, and her dad came on with a fallen woman. Eh? I hope you've got more respect for your daughter. I wouldn't hurt my little Ruthie like that, would I? Hey, yeah, because me and you are like that, aren't we? Bezzies. Ah, you're really grown attached to her, aren't you? Yeah, she's a little cracker. Mm, you're really going to miss her when she goes back, aren't you? If she goes back. Well, I was thinking me and Matthew might work something out, you know. What? You mean sharing her? Turn and turn about, mate? Well, no, I was thinking more along the lines of her staying here with me, you know, permanently. You? Looking after her? Full time? Bringing her up? Yeah, well, why not? I mean, we get on well, don't we? Well, yeah, but I mean, what about Mandy? And a child at that age? It's not good for it to be away from its mum. Yeah, well, Mandy's very busy with her work, isn't she? Helping other people. I mean, she's got other things in her life. I haven't. Roots all I've got. I think we need to have a little chat, girls. Don't you? What the hell's keeping them? That's typical, isn't it, eh? When you need a copper. God, listen, Zim. Moaning about inadequate policing. Hypocrite. Shut it! You save your talking for when you're in there. Mr. Dixon. At last. Mr. Dixon ate Brookside Close. We are seeing a lot of you, aren't we? Uh, hang on, you're not saying to us, are you? Must be a lucky day, eh? <laughs> Behave yourself. We want the top brass, the big boss. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm the only one available. You what? Do you know who this is? Uh, can't say I recognise the face. This is the drug smuggling get that stitched my daughter. And my granddaughter. Has left my son in prison in Thailand to rot. Of course. I have heard about your son. Yeah. Well, he's the tour I would put him there. Right. Step this way. You better tell me all about it. But you can't throw us out. Well, I'm sorry, but I have no alternative. I'm not prepared to spend another night on Patricia's couch. But where will we go? Well, I'm giving you 48 hours notice. Two days. Well, we're not going to find anywhere that quick, are we? Surely, if you start looking immediately. It's impossible to find anywhere decent around here. Rachel, that is hardly the attitude. But I thought we still had four weeks left on the lease. Ah, the landlord's prerogative, I'm afraid. I'm entitled to cancel the tenancy agreement at any time. Grace, well, that's all well and truly stitched, isn't it? <sighs> Look, girls, I'm sorry, but I'm homeless and this is my home. And let's face it, you've broken just about every clause in the agreement. I mean, the place is a total tip. Mrs Crosby wouldn't have thrown us out. What was that? Well, three poor defenceless girls. Mrs. Crosby would never have evicted us. Yeah. She's dead nice here, isn't she? Yeah. So sort of person who puts others before herself. Look, I am. I'm sorry. Suppose we better start packing then. Oh, but I don't know where I'll go. Especially with having no family or anyone. Yeah. And I'll phone some bed and breakfast say. Don't want to ask me dad if we can stay there. Not them worrying about all my and everything. Um, I'll make some sarnies for us to take. Wait. All right, all right. You can stay. But only until the agreement runs out in four weeks' time. Brilliant, Grace. Oh, thanks, Mr. Crosby. And on one condition. Yeah, sure. Whatever. That I have my old room back. You are. 
But, well, where else am I supposed to sleep? Oh, no. Party's over, and the nightmare's just begun. Extraordinary story. Anything else you want to add? No. That's it. That's everything. It's me who planted those drugs. <laughs> right. Excuse me. Hasn't he got a sign that? Forget me head if he wants screwed on. Bingo. Right, your autograph there, please. Sign it. Right, that's it. Yep, all over. Thanks very much, gentlemen. I'll see you out. Ta-ra. Nice knowing you. Have a nice time in Thailand. I hope they throw away the key. And don't bother to send a postcard. <clears throat> um, I think there might have been a slight misunderstanding here. Hey? Um, Mr. Stanlow's free to go. You what? You let me go? You're not going to arrest him? There's nothing to charge him with at this point. <sighs> he sent a three-year-old kid through customs with a teddy bear stuck full of smack. I'm sorry, but this whole inquiry, it's out of our hands. I just passed this on to the drug squad. It'll be their decision whether to take it any further. No doubt they'll be in touch as soon as someone's available. Hey, sod that. My son and two other kids are in jail because of this slime bag. Now I want action and I want it now! Mr Dixon, there's nothing I can do. It's outside my control. You've got a signed statement, for God's sake! And it'll be put on record. What? What's the good of that? He's guilty, he's admitted it, hasn't he? He's begging you to arrest him, for God's sake. This case is outside our jurisdiction. It's all down to the Thai authorities. It's nothing to do with us. Well, make it something to do with you. Arrest him, stick him on a plane to Thailand. I'm sorry, Mr. Dixon, it doesn't work like that. I really am sorry. So, uh, you managed to get hold of Mandy? Nah, I gave her another ring while we were out, but I had no joy. Hard woman to get hold of, isn't she? She certainly is. Must be dead busy with the work, you know. Aye, whatever keeps her happy, eh? But this job of hers, um, I thought she was on call 24 hours a day. Yeah, well, she is. Why? Wow. She must have a bleeper or a mobile phone or something. Make it a charity they work for, you know. If you don't have that kind of money. Anyway, what are you getting at? Nothing. Just thought she'd be dead easy to get hold of, that's it. Well, obviously, she isn't, is she? Excuse me, I need it. Jordan, please. I'll move all my clothes into Jackie's room. Seeing as me and her are going to be sharing. I've already cleared a drawer for you, Rach. Oh, ta. A fair bit of space in my wardrobe if you need it. Right, thanks. Right? That's that drawer empty. You can stop putting your stuff away, Mr. Crosby. Oh, right, thanks. Hang on, you've forgotten something. Oh. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> right, there you go, Mr. Crosby. Another drawer for you. You can get your socks in there. Right. Well, that's me just about done. I'll be out of your way in a minute. Uh, Rachel, just a minute. <laughs> What about all these posters? Oh, really brighten the place up, don't they? I thought I'd leave them here for you. <laughs> yes, but... Right, I... well, that's me finished. I'll leave you to it, Vinny. Welcome home, Mr. Crosby. <sighs> Thanks. Oh, and we need a fiver off you for the kitty. And it's your turn through the tea. Home sweet home. Yeah, it's OK, Mandy. It's all sorted. No, 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 don't worry. Don't worry, I'll let. I'll get some better ring you. Okay, take care now. Bye bye. It's me and you, Ruthie, yeah? No, your mum's too busy with her work. Too busy.
busy helping other people. That's all right. You've got me, you've got Dad. I'm gonna look after you. I'm staying here now with me. You're not going back to Bristol. No, no. Where are you going? I'm off. Oh, no, you're not. You are? You're staying here. Look, I've done what you asked. I went to the busies. Close the door. What? Close it. What's going on? Don't be thinking you've got away with it. Because you haven't. See, I'm gonna make your life a misery. You what? You're gonna understand what it's like to suffer. Like me and Jackie are suffering. And our Lindsay, and Kylie, and Mike Dixon. So you're just gonna sit here and sweat it out like the rest of us. And when I need to take out all my anger, and frustration on someone, you will be here. Hey, Jimmy, I didn't mean it, honest. I just wanted to scare them, you know? I didn't know the plane stopped in Bangkok. Shut it! And don't you even think of doing a runner? Cos I'll come after you. She asleep? She's beautiful. Look, son, you've got to take her back. Why? I'll be honest with you. I've just been speaking to Mandy on the phone. What, you phoned her? Yeah, I phoned her. What for? Look, I knew she'd be worried. You, you had no right, Nick. Sin, she was up the wall. She was on her way to the train station to go up here and take Ruth back. She's the kid's mother. She's got a right to know what's going on. Yeah, and I'm a dad. Don't I have any rights? Of course you have. But it's not about that, is it? Well, what do you mean? Look, it's not about custody or rights. It's about that little one there. You love the bones of it, don't you? Yeah. Look, you've got to take her back to Bristol. She needs a man. Needs a dad as well, doesn't she? Yeah. And she's got you. And she couldn't wish for a better dad. But you've got to let go, mate. I don't want to lose her, Mick. I... Just... She's everything I've ever wanted. Someone to care for, look after. Give her all the things that I never had. My own kid. I oh, know. She's someone else's kid as well, mate. Imagine how Monday must be feeling. Uh, you're not gonna lose her. But she can still come up and visit, can't she? Yeah. And you can go and see her. I was going to take it to New Brighton on the ferry. Well, there you go, then. That's a summer holiday's boxed off right away. The weeks will soon pass. She'll be back up here before you know it. Right, well, um, I'll phone Mandy. Yeah. You're going to put a mind at ease. I'll stay up here and keep an eye on the baby. I've been waiting for you. 
Now, I know how it must look, but uh, you never gave me the chance to explain. And the more I think about it, the more bizarre it is. But if you just listen to me for five minutes, please. Please. Right. That does it. How dare you? You are going to listen to me, whether you like it or not. Patricia! I can't believe they just let him walk. <laughs> Nothing surprises me anymore. Yeah, but he signs a confession and everything. I mean, that proves all Michael and Lindsay are innocent. And that scumbag Gary's still walking the streets. If I thought it would do any good, I'd drag him on a plane and take him out there myself. I wouldn't waste your time if you think this place is bad. I'm not away from Jackie Corkell either. But you can't even get in to see her, Michael. Daz, you don't know what's going on out there. What do we do now? Hey? Who do we get fobbed off by next? Well, must be something we can do. We're gonna lose him, Jack. I know we are. What? Oh, Michael, I'm never gonna see him again. Oh, Dad, don't say that. I'll never get him out of that place. Don't give up, eh? I don't know if I've got any more fight left in me, love. Dad, please. Oh, Michael's counting on you. You can't give up. You're his only hope. That's why I was with that prostitute. That's exactly what happened. I swear to God, I'm telling the truth. And now, I'm being persecuted. I mean, how dare they publish my photo in the newspaper? Well, they must have got it from the listing magazine. The photograph, the name of the restaurant, everything. Oh, Patricia, please. I wouldn't lie to you. Patricia. Are you listening to me? You wouldn't lie to me? No, no, and I have no reason to lie. Uh, I've got nothing to hide. So why did you tell me you were with Susanna the night you were arrested? Uh, so you did lie to me? No. You lied, and about her? Uh, all people. All right, all right. I lied about that night. Only because I was so ashamed about what happened. Ashamed? But you just said nothing happened. Nothing did happen. So why didn't you tell me the day after you were arrested if you had nothing to hide? <laughs> the police said that you went to see that prostitute twice. I've already explained. I'm innocent. I've got nothing to hide. So why didn't you tell me? Why? OK, I'll tell you why. Because I was so frightened that you wouldn't believe me. How can you say that? Well, look at the way you're reacting now. You don't believe a word I'm saying. Oh, that is typical. Try and turn it all on me. Well, it won't work, Max. You're a liar and a cheat. I'm not a cheat! Don't you call me a cheat! I did not cheat on you, I swear! Why should I take the word of a liar? Oh, God, oh, I've tried to explain! But you have to have it your way, don't you? You have to turn the knife! Do you know, you're more bitter and twisted than I thought possible. Right, Max, that is it. We're finished. I want you out of this house now. Oh, you can whistle. If you don't like the way things are around here, then you know where the front door is. If you think I'm leaving, you've got another thing coming. And if you think I'm going to let you drive me out. OK, Max, right. If that's what you want, you stay. But from now on, we lead separate lives. We don't talk. We don't eat together. I don't even want to be in the same room as you. Suits me fine. Start as we mean to go on, eh? <laughs> <laughs>